Hello everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. I'm Karen Hewson, your productivity and system strategist, and I help creative mumpreneurs to simplify, streamline, automate and outsource their business activities so that they can grow their business while keeping their lifestyle in first place because that's why we build these businesses ourselves anyway, for that flexibility. Today I'm going to give you four strategies to tackle social media overwhelm. Um, there's two really important principles that underpin a couple of these strategies. Um, and they're things that you can apply to social media and they're things that you can ask yourself every time you're evaluating any activity in your business. It's just a little bit cloudy and chilly here today, so I've got my mug of coffee to keep me warm. Um, I'm also going to go through, I'm going to follow those four steps that I just talked about in my intro. Simplify, streamline, automate, then outsource. So let's start with the first one, right? Simplify. So when it comes to social media, the first thing you want to do is eliminate anything that you don't need. So go through and declutter. Um, <clears throat> evaluate which social media platforms you even want to be. Um, looking at both as a consumer and as a contributor. So, um, you know, if you've been trying to be everywhere on social media for your business and you just end up not being anywhere consistently, narrow that way, way down and pick one, maybe two platforms and really build up a consistent strategy. Something that we hear all the time is that um, the people who get, who are the most successful on social media are really good at one channel. They've really focused on, um, you know, Twitter or they've really focused on Instagram and they've um, built up that following and they're doing one thing really well. Once you've um, focused and, have you, and you've got one thing going really well, then expand and see how that goes. Let me give you a couple of bonus tips on this. So if you decide that you want to be really into Instagram but also you have a Facebook page and you know that you're active in Facebook groups and you don't want people to be, um, your page to look really stale. You want to have um, a lot of content going up so that it looks like you're posting. You can share straight away from Instagram to your Facebook page automatically. And that's something that I see in my feed a lot. Um, and I'm sure you do as well. But, you know, it doesn't bother me to see a post on Instagram and a post on Facebook because as a consumer, I'm in those places at different times for different reasons. So have a think about, and this is one of these underpinning strategies, have a think about the purpose behind each social media um, channel that you're using. So for example, your Facebook page might just be a step on the way to getting to your website. So you are active in Facebook groups and that's one of your social media strategies. People then click through to your personal profile and then you want some stuff there so they can jump to either your Facebook page and or your website. And then they go to your page and they have a look at some stuff there. So you want your page to be optimized so that people can find out more about you, can see what you've got going on, but mostly you just want to channel them onto your website. So your purpose for Facebook isn't necessarily to engage people on there, it's just a way that they can click through to find out more about you. So that's where if, you know, Facebook groups and then Instagram are your sort of primary channels is, you know, automatically posting from Instagram to Facebook is going to make your Facebook page look fresh. And also people can see that you're active on Instagram. Um, and your goals and your real fundamental purpose for Instagram is where you want to grow a following <laughs> and engage people with comments and likes and shares and things like that. So that's the first, well, I'm going to talk a bit more about that actually. Simplify. So that's as a business owner where you want to be contributing. Narrow that right down to um, one or two where you can be super consistent um, and then expand as you go. As that becomes easy for you and you find you have more time to learn a new channel or um, yeah, spend some more time implementing stuff, then expand where you are. As a consumer, and this is the big one where we all get bogged down, right? We get sent a zillion notifications from all sorts of social media channels. And whenever you sign up to one, the, all of the notica notifications are on, right? They will just send you everything because they want you to be engaged with them on their platform and where they are. So one of, this is where you really need to get really, really 
um, ruthless is again how do you want to be using these um, services? What do you just not need to look at? What have you outgrown? Who don't you like to follow anymore? Um, what groups have you checked out and aren't a good fit? So for the simplify step, go through all the social media outlets that you've got apps to on your phone or accounts for, remove ones that you just aren't interested in anymore. <laughs> so things like, okay, Periscope had its day and I don't know. I had I removed that a while ago because now we have Facebook Live. And when you're again building strategies on Facebook, then that's a better um, match than Periscope. So maybe you've still got the Periscope app installed and you've not opened it in months. Um, so remove remove those social channels that's the first thing then with the ones you're going to keep go into your notification settings oh my gosh this is this will just clear out so much clutter when you you're only having relevant notifications so i'm not saying to turn all notifications off although have a think about where you want to be going to check notifications and that's kind of blending into step two which is streamlined but to start with just remove all the groups you don't want to be a part of unfollow anyone that doesn't line up with um, what you're interested in anymore um, there's a couple of cool tips if you want to look at um, your Facebook news feed and you like to follow lots of people for business but you want to use Facebook for personal use for example is you can unfollow people from your news feed without actually unfollowing them as friends or unfollowing pages or unfollowing groups. So for myself, if I'm interacting in Facebook groups, I go and use the Facebook groups app or the direct URL you can use in a browser, um, which is something like facebook.com slash memberships question mark groups. I don't know. You'd need to need to look it up. Um, and I go straight there because then that just has all my groups and it doesn't get me distracted into anything else on Facebook. Um, I've just slightly lost my train of thought. But anyway, remove those things that you're not interested in and change any of the notification settings as well. So if you want to still be in a group, but you don't want to see them on your page. So I've turned off almost all of the newsfeed um, posts from those groups. So I always just go into the groups and I'm sort of proactive in choosing when to interact rather than going into Facebook to try to check up on my personal friends and family and not being able to see what they've posted because I've got all of these um, you know posts shared from groups or pages okay so that's a little bonus tip um, then look at streamline so simplify is to just remove anything that's not relevant anymore that's gonna be the easy ones if you're umming and ahhing about it don't make it hard just decide to keep it and maybe you'll do this process again in a few months time and it'll be easier to say no and to get rid of it so streamline, step two, is to decide how you are going to interact with these social media tools. And this is that second underlying principle I talked about. You want to be proactively choosing when to look at these things, when to respond to notifications, to have time in your week to, to do that. You don't want to be reactive where your notifications are popping up, popping up on your phone everywhere and interrupting you when you're in the middle of um, you know, writing up notes from a client or processing an order. You don't want these social media channels to interrupt your life. You want to choose to use those social media channels in a particular way and I think that as a principle goes with the use of any technology at all it shouldn't be sort of popping up and interrupting your life and deciding when you interact with it you want to set it up to support the lifestyle that you want so set up all of your social media notifications in the place that you want to deal with them so maybe you have the app on your phone and you like clicking on that little world icon and scrolling through and just you know interacting and replying to the ones that make sense maybe you get things lost there so you want to have email notifications and you can funnel those email notifications from Facebook or Instagram or whatever into a particular folder so they're not just going straight into your inbox they're getting funneled into a place and you can decide that okay a couple times a week or once a day I'm actually going in and I'm reviewing those notifications 
So that's going to be the first thing to streamline what you're doing is choose where you're going to deal with these notifications. And then the second thing is to figure out now that you've got them all in one place, what ones do you need? Um, a lot of the times, again, if I join a new Facebook group or something or follow somebody new, I start getting the notifications because I've just forgotten to set, um, you know, what, what my preferences are. Um, so again, going to the Facebook groups app or going to your followers list or whatever and change your notifications, change your settings in those social media platforms. Um, I know I'm talking a lot about Facebook, but that's just A, because we're on Facebook Live, so you're on Facebook, <laughs> and two, because that's the um, primary thing that I use for, for my social media channels. But the same thing goes um, for Pinterest, for Instagram, for anything else. Go into your settings, go into notifications, and have a look at what they're going to send you. And always think about what action you're going to take. So you don't need to know something unless you're going to take an action um, as a result of knowing that information. So um, you don't need new follower information unless maybe you send a personalized follow-up message. You don't need um, likes to be to you know notified of likes because it's like, cool, that's a like. You, you probably want to be notified about comments. So you can reply and be prompt on responding to comments. Um, you want to make sure that, and I know I'm, I'm talking about groups because you can start, you know, joining these Facebook groups and you get notified of every single post in that group. Don't do that. Go into the group settings and you have, I think there's four options where you can get all posts, highlights, posts from your friends or none. And you know, think about why you're in that group. If you've joined and you haven't had a chance to check that out yet, then just turn them all off and set some time aside to go and scope out these new Facebook groups and see if they're a fit. Leave the groups that aren't a fit anymore. Change um, your settings to only send you maybe friends posts if you really want to keep an eye on what your friends are posting and support them and, um, you know, sort of contribute that way. Um, highlight posts are quite useful when you have um, um, they'll send you usually what the owner of the group posts and also if there's um, any really popular posts so that's another way if you don't want to turn them off completely and you've got a new group you can start to get a little bit of a feel of what that groups like by those posts and then um, yeah and then turn off all posts and that means that you won't get any directly from the group but you still always get posts that you're tagged in or that you comment on so those again are the ones where you're going to want to respond the most so always focus on setting up your notifications to receive the ones that are going to result in an action from you you don't just want the informational ones you want the ones where you go oh I can comment on that or someone's tagged me in it um, yeah, that sort of stuff. So don't just get informational notifications. Set it up so that you're getting notifications when you actually want to take an action. Actually, actually. So that's simplify, that's streamline. Automate is the one that people talk about all the time. And I did a Facebook Live on this um, the other week, which I'll link to about choosing social media scheduling. This is usually where people jump to, to, you know, they feel like they need to be posting a lot on social media for their business and, you know, automation is the solution. Um, go through steps one and two first. You might find that you've got a whole lot more time and you can actually still do things the same way you have been doing when it comes to, you know, scheduling posts and posting things out. Um, so when we're talking about automating, automating is really good for, um, posts that I guess you're going to just if you're batching or if maybe you've got a Facebook group and you have like daily themes so anything where you're doing the same thing on the same day and you can um, you can set that up you know rather than you going into that group and remembering at a certain date and time you can just set your scheduler to do that you want to automate to have usually a base level of content going out on your social media feeds but um, you also want to keep that space for the impromptu stuff, for the um, t really um, timely and daily relevant things. So just because you've got stuff set up on a scheduler and automated, um, keep that space so that you can still you know, post something that day because you were inspired or something happened that you want to share in your business and things like that. Um, again, I'll link to that other Facebook Live I did where um, you can hear more about 
automating but i think the thing is you know schedule posts where um they have that base level of um, content going out on your feed or it's something you're going to be regularly posting on the same day and time um, because yeah that will save you a bit of time it'll also mean you can um, you can batch stuff so um, you can decide like I do at the beginning of the week I'm going to um, I know I've got Facebook lives going out Sunday through Wednesday um, and then I'm going to schedule posts for Thursday Friday Saturday so that there's other content going out um, then the fourth one, so that's simplify, streamline, automate, outsource. Outsource is, um, you kind of got two different options. One is to, you know, bring in a VA or an assistant to help you manage your social media channels. They can comment for you. They can like posts for you. Um, they can start to learn how, you know, you interact on your pages um, and your account so they can be sort of that first customer service responder to those things instead of you feeling like you have to reply to every comment and, and stay that present they can step in and do that for you another way to do it if you've got um, groups or forums that you um, that you host is to have a co-moderator or co-admin so again they can have um, they can have that kind of status in the group where people know that you know you and this other person kind of moderate and hang out and host and they can then help you to comment and share and post things and just um yeah interact and keep that space the way you want without you having to um you having to comment on everything and like everything because that can be you know once your groups get a certain size or if they've got a, a ton of interaction um that's a lot to keep up with it takes time to write a response i think often we you know get those notifications on our phone and tap 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 away and suddenly half an hour's vanished and you you know you meant to be sitting um, you meant to be focusing on your kid or you meant to be um, checking some more emails or following up with a client and that time just disappears without you realizing. Um, so that's um, that's outsource. Those last two, automate and outsource, are fairly straightforward. But really, if you focus on the simplifying and streamlining first, you're going to, um, yeah, you're going to notice a huge difference you'll get your time back but you'll also just get headspace back because you won't be searching through a whole bunch of irrelevant notifications for the stuff you actually want to reply and comment on and that's going to mean you can um, yeah, tackle that stuff so much quicker so I hope those four steps have helped given you some ideas maybe you've heard this advice for like the seventh time and you're finally like okay I'm going to give it a go <laughs> Because sometimes we hear this stuff and we're like, oh, I know, I know this would probably help. But, you know, you feel like you can't do it all at once because you've got, you know, tons of groups you're a part of and all of this. So, you know, if it feels like an insurmountable job to start tackling your social media, then just take five minutes, just take 10 minutes and, and do that right now. Just take five minutes right now. Look through your Facebook groups you're a member of and um, leave the groups that you've not, you know, hang out in for months that's that's a first really easy step um maybe you're part of hundreds and hundreds of groups which i know some people are five minutes set your timer and then once it stops you can take you know breathe a sigh of relief and be like okay i've i've made a little step i've made a little step and i can stop and ignore this massive problem now until next time when you take just another five minutes um so you know make it doable um, it will definitely have a great impact going forward when you're able to just get the relevant information and be proactive and so that you can choose when to um, interact and when to reply to these things rather than having social media interrupting your day constantly and feeling like, you know, you're not being and contributing to the world the way you want to. And that's not what it's for. It's a tool for you to use to connect with the people um, that you can really make a difference with and help. Awesome. If that's you, then you can check me out up here, karenhewson.com. Um, and also just click over to videos if you want to hear um, me talk about all sorts of other topics. Um, the one thing I mentioned was the um, Facebook Live I did on automating social media and those tools. So I'll link to that in a second in comments. Uh, if you have any other questions for me, just pop them down and we'll talk soon. See you later.